Good morning, my name is Stephanie Smith. It's my privilege this morning to serve as narrator for today's Joint Base Lewis McCord Wastewater Treatment Plant Groundbreaking Ceremony. I'll open today's ceremony by introducing our host, Colonel Hodges, excuse me, Colonel Chuck H. Hodges, uh, Commander Joint Base Lewis McCord. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the JBLM Wastewater Treatment Plant Groundbreaking, and I would argue the prettiest wastewater treatment plant location in the entire continental United States. Uh, Congressman Dix, uh, Mr. Vandaloo, uh, Mr. Kilmer, Mr. Daca, uh, Cynthia Ayel, I think Cynthia showed back up there, uh, Ms. Kiefer, Ms. Pfeiffer, uh, Mr. McLaren, and Mr. Wall, thank you all for attending today's uh, ceremony. As many of you know, JBLM has undergone massive transformation since 2000. Uh, we have had the arrival of the Striker Brigades, the arrival of the C-17 Wings, 7th ID, and most importantly in 2010, the growth of what was Fort Lewis and McCord Air Force Base into what we now know as, as JBLM. During that time, our population has over doubled. And today we stand at 47,000 service members, under 55,000 family members, 16,000 civilians, who make up Joint Base Lewis McCord, and as we call it, the other town or other city along I-5. When you add all that population together, we are the seventh largest city in the state of Washington, which I think is pretty significant. And when you add in the payroll, contracts, growth, it's about a, a $6 billion in, uh, six billion impact on the local economy in the state of Washington every single year. Now that growth is seeing people coming in, and like many cities, we grew as a population, but we're now playing catch up with our infrastructure. And so over the past 10 years, it's not, we will build it and they will come. It's, they're here, what are you doing about it? And so as a result of that, over the past 10 years, the DOD has spent $2.5 billion on the infrastructure of Joint Base lewis McCord. And today is the next step forward in working on that infrastructure. The wastewater treatment plant we have right now is inadequate to support that population that I mentioned. And not only the population of JBLM, but also the populations of Camp Murray, as well as the American Lake uh, Veterans, Veterans Center. So we have to get after this, and what we see today is a true commitment by the nation and the, and the Department of Defense, not only for Joint Base Lewis McCord and our service members and families, but the Puget Sound and the entire state of Washington. So again, a great commitment by all for our dedication. Once this facility is complete in summer of 2016, we will have a state-of-the-art, world-class facility that truly meets our requirements and puts us on par with the other cities and municipalities and the type of facilities that they have. So we'll go from an antiquated old facility to one that truly is world class and sets us in position for the next stage in this process, which is phase two, which will truly then eliminate all effluent going into the Puget Sound, and we will have a purple piping system that keeps all our wastewater on JBLM. We're not putting anything back into that beautiful waterway out there. Now, all of this would not have happened today uh, without the great leadership that I see in front of you, including uh, retired Congressman Norm Dix. He has been a true leader uh, during his time in Congress and took JBLM on his own. And we, whether it be from the Madigan Hospital to our schools and to this facility today, without his leadership and dedication to our service members and families and his understanding of the importance that JBLM plays in the South Sound, we wouldn't be here. I also want to acknowledge our Congressman Heck, Congressman Smith, uh, Senator Murray, uh, Congressman Kilmer, all folks that, again, their leadership back in Washington, D.C., makes those folks over there remember, hey, we're 3,000 miles away, uh, but we are still a critical part of the national defense strategy, even more so now as we've rebalanced to the Pacific. So the importance of JBLM is not going anywhere. And again, we appreciate the leadership of everyone uh, to make today happen and your continued leadership and people making people realize what JBLM is the importance we play uh, for the nation. So again, thank you all very much for coming this evening. I think I'm going to turn over this morning. I'm going to turn over the podium now to uh, retired Congressman Norm Dix. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Hodges. As Colonel Hodges said, our next speaker is uh, Congressman Norm Dix, a strong uh, defense and environmental advocate. Before retiring from Congress, Congressman Dix represented Washington State's 6th Congressional District from 1977 to through 2013, where he received a rare first-term appointment to the House Appropriations Committee, a committee he served on for his entire tenure in Congress. In addition, Congressman Dix served on and chaired the Interior Appropriations Subcommittee, where he made environmental issues a priority. Congressman Dix also became the chair of the Defense Appropriations Committee. He concluded his tenure in Cong Congress as the top-ranking Democratic member on the Defense Appropriations Committee and top-ranking Democrat on the House Appropriations Committee.
Throughout his congressional career, Mr. Dix has been a strong advocate of national defense requirements, service members, environmental issues, and the great Pacific Northwest. His commitment to the nation's defense and environmental needs is well represented today by the JBLM Wastewater Treatment Plant Project. This infrastructure upgrade is critical to JBLM's viability as the Department of Defense's largest operational joint base and to the protection of threatened and endangered species living in the Puget Sound. Well, thank you very much, uh, Colonel Hodges and all the distinguished officers and uh, friends, um, Dennis McLaren, our regional administrator, and uh, people from the, the Corps of Engineers. It's great to be here today at uh, my favorite base, Joint Base Lewis-McChord. And uh, uh, I, uh, I've always enjoyed working on projects on this base. and. Uh, the colonel mentioned a few of them. One, one, the first one out of the gate for me when I became congressman, and I was, and I had, and on those days I had Scoop Jackson and Warren Magnuson at my side, and that made a huge difference. But the first one we did was Madigan Army Hospital. It was over a three hundred million dollar project, and uh, we had to do something that had not been done up to that point in time. We had to get incremental funding. And we had to get, and Senator Jackson and I worked together with uh, Secretary Weinberger in the Reagan administration and uh, uh, David Stockman, who was the head of OMB. And we set the tone because uh, if you had to put all that money up in one year, it was going to be very, very difficult on the Army budget for military construction. And so we funded it over a four or five year period of time. And it's a world class facility and one that I'm very proud of. Uh, we also put a new school next to it. We couldn't call it a school. It was a special needs center, uh, Evergreen. Uh, that was another important pro program. Uh, the Stone Education Center, the Wounded Warrior Facility, and as, as the Colonel mentioned, we got to, uh, approved five new schools and one that we're going to get approved. Um, and two of them are already finished, and I've had a chance to be there on the opening and uh, just first-class work. Uh, and, and, and something that I'm very proud of. And we did 37 of these across the country. So it wasn't just done here. This was done by a, an Army study that showed the, which, which schools were in, uh, in need of repair. And, and one thing I thought is when these young men and women are over in, in either Iraq, Afghanistan, or wherever, they don't need to be worried about the schools that their kids are going to. And so getting those fixed was something that that I was also very proud of. Now this facility, this treatment facility is absolutely essential. Uh, you know, I was very concerned that uh, with the, cre the governor, Gregoire, we created the Puget Sound Partnership, uh, work we were, I was on the original group, and, uh, and this, this, stu this stood out as one of the uh, facilities that had to be upgraded. And uh, we, the money was in the budget, $91 million. It was essential that we get this thing started. And uh, I'm glad to be here today. Uh, I worked, uh, I, you know, you, when you can talk, when you're chairman uh, or a ranking member, you can talk to people in the administration. It was not an earmark, the dreaded earmark. It was not. But it was, it was absolutely important that this be in the, the, the administration's plan and and it was in there, and uh, and I'm excited to to one to see this facility built, but also the the, the next phase, which where we can use this uh, treated wet wastewater for purposes on the base, and I can and save a tremendous amount of uh, water capacity by 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 this upgrade, and uh, you know uh, it has been mentioned, but. Uh, the, this base has had tremendous growth, and uh, I'm very proud of the three striker brigades. The striker vehicle is one that I strongly supported in the Congress, especially the double V hull. And I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me and said, you know, our son was wounded, but he survived because we, he was in a striker, and, and, uh, and it was built for, and the MRAP as well. Congress tried to do everything we could 
to, de to deal with this terrible problem of these improvised explosive devices. But uh, again, uh, I, I want to congratulate uh, the Army and the and Joint Base Lewis McCord. Uh, I'm very, very proud of the fact we have the C-17 here, uh, which is a, an aircraft that uh, I so strongly supported. It had some difficulties at first, but we're proud of how it's developed and and what a great program it's turned out to be. And you know, my good friend uh, Billy Frank, uh, chairman of the had been chairman of the Nisqually Indian Tribe and Frank's Landing, uh, has said. To, uh, and he just passed away a few days ago, that he was concerned that the smolts coming out of the Nisqually River didn't make it to, to um, uh, the Narrows Bridge. And, and that's why, again, protecting those endangered species is such an important priority. And this project will deal with that. So I'm glad we're getting started. And uh, I want to congratulate all those that are working on this, the Corps and the contractor. And I hope that... Uh, we can finish this on time and get this plant operational uh, for the good of Puget Sound and, and our environment. And uh, thank you for having me here today. And it's always uh, an honor to come to Joint Base Lewis McCord, where we have the finest military serving our country. Uh, I'm proud of all your service, and, and I'm proud of the people who uh, have been here over the years. I mean, you look at the list of of leaders of this base, it's a, it's a who's who in the United States Army. And, uh, and I've always enjoyed and appreciated the association. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dix. I'd now like to introduce uh, Kiera Pfeiffer, South Sound Regional Director, Office of Senator Patty Murray, who will read a statement from Senator Murray. Thank you, Stephanie. I am Kira Pfeiffer. I work for U.S. Senator Patty Murray. Unfortunately, the senator could not be with us today as much as she wanted to and tried to be, but I would be happy to read this statement on her behalf. Dear friends, I would like to congratulate Joint Base Lewis McCord on the groundbreaking of the future site of the new wastewater treatment plant. This $91 million investment encourages JBLM to continue their environmental efforts to the Puget Sound community and move forward on the Army Net Zero Water and Waste Program. The new wastewater treatment plant will replace the outdated facility that fails to meet current EPA criteria. The new plant will treat effluent water to meet Class A drinking water standards. As we all know, JBLM is a strong supporter of the Puget Sound restoration efforts and is committed to working with the Sound community on improving the quality of life on and around the base. As one of the Army's earliest adopters of sustainable practices and net zero concepts, JBLM is an ideal location for this investment. The new wastewater treatment plant will also set the stage for reclaimed water usage in the future, allowing JBLM to pursue net zero water by collecting and reusing the water consumed on base. Net Zero is an Army program that encourages an installation to reuse the water it consumes, which is a zero water strategy as the base balances water availability and ensures a sustainable water supply for years to come. I am pleased to be a partner in this project and that I helped secure the $91 million of federal funding for a new, new wastewater treatment plant. As a senior member of the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense, I have fought for resources that will keep our military strong our nation and community secure, and ensure our troops have the equipment they need to stay safe, healthy, and do their jobs. I am sorry that I am unable to be here today at this ceremony, and on behalf of the residents of the state of Washington, please accept my congratulations on the groundbreaking and celebration of this important project. Sincerely, U.S. Senator Patty Murray. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pfeiffer. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Dennis McLaren, EPA Region 10 Administrator. Mr. McLaren. Thank you very much. And uh, Colonel Hodges, uh, thanks for having me here today. Uh, it's great to be here with uh, Congressman Dix and uh, all the others, uh, with Colonel Estock from the Corps. Uh, it's uh, 
great to be here. You know, some of my friends were teasing me, though, about coming to a wastewater treatment plant, groundbreaking, uh, implying that these plants aren't sexy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm here to tell you that if you're concerned about the environment, uh, wastewater treatment plants are sexy. Uh, with Puget Sound and the resource that we have out here, uh, it's great to be doing this, and, and it, it was sexy enough to get Norm here, so uh, <laughs> so uh, you must be doing something right. But uh, the South Sound here, where we're at, is is very it's a very susceptible water body. Uh, uh, Norm mentioned the smolts uh, that Billy Frank talked about uh, coming out of the Nisqually Delta, trying to get uh, out to Puget Sound and and out to uh, open water where they can grow and, and come back and uh, provide food and resources uh, to the tribes here. That's a really important thing. Uh, down here in the South Sound, there's a limited amount of flushing and exchange of marine water. So this treatment plant will provide an important improvement in water quality in the South Sound, an area that we have to improve if we're going to protect and preserve Puget Sound as a whole. And uh, this is a sound investment in sustainability. Uh, several have mentioned that uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord is a sustain sustainability leader. I tout that to a lot of folks uh, when I'm out around talking. You guys are doing a lot of the really right work here around sustainability. And this is uh, a project that shows uh, how the base can grow in the future while protecting Puget Sound by incorporating the latest uh, water treatment technology. And when we can achieve this with the third biggest treatment plant in the South Sound, we do have something to crow about, and that's why I'm here today. Uh, the upgraded plant will help to uh, increase dissolved oxygen levels in the South Sound and decrease various toxic pollutants in the vicinity of the discharge, which will improve the habitat conditions for salmon, steelhead, bull trout, smelt, and rockfish. And uh, dramatic reductions in solids will decrease the amount of PBDEs. Those are flame retardants uh, released into Puget Sound and will reduce the health risks to killer whales uh, from PD PBDE uh, bioaccumulation, which we know is a significant problem. And the technologies that JBLM will use uh, will dramatically reduce the plant's pollution and nutrient load uh, discharged into the sound. And in a way, that's not surprising. We'd, we'd expect huge improvements with a new state-of-the-art plant, right? But uh, what's really interesting uh, here, I think, is that not only is this going to uh, uh, state-of-the-art treatment, but it does uh, uh, allow in the future for that water reuse program, which means that there'll be zero discharge to Puget Sound, which is... Uh, a really incredible advance, and uh, so uh, that's uh, that's uh, really great to see this happening. And of course, the best pollution is no pollution. Uh, so this is a really smart project to create the opportunity to get there. And finally, this uh, project demonstrates a holistic approach to the work that we're all doing together on Puget Sound. Uh, it shows that the federal agencies can put their uh, heads together and walk the talk on environmental protection. And for decades, uh, Norm and and others, including our friend uh, Billy Frank Jr. that Norm mentioned uh, who just uh, passed away uh, a week ago fought to rehabilitate the Nisqually River Delta for the sake of the terrific Chinook runs that once used the area and uh, the plan is just north of uh, the Nisqually Delta so all the work we do to clean up the water uh, out of this plant will protect the smolts that emerge uh, from from the protection of the Delta for their journey through the sound and I'm pretty sure Billy would approve of what you're doing here today Commander Hodges and uh, all of those that are involved in this. So thanks again for having me here today. Uh, good on you guys for doing this, and uh, it's a really uh, great project to be a part of. Thank you, Mr. McLaren. And now I'd like to introduce Colonel Bruce Estuck, Seattle District Commander, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Good morning, Representative Dix. Staff members from the offices of Senator Murray, Representative Heck, Representative Smith, Representative Kilmer, Mr. McLaren, Colonel Hodges, Mr. Wall, ladies and gentlemen. I kind of feel like uh, I picked up something a few years back from former Assistant Secretary of the Army, uh, Mr. John Paul Woodley. He used to like to say, you know, it's all been said before, just not by me. You know, a lot of you have sort of sort of stolen my, my thunder here, but I uh, want, want to run through a, a few things. Um, I think it's great to join you in celebrating this, this really significant uh, day in our collaborative effort to replace six, some you know some 60 year old aging infrastructure with a new facility that provides capacity and an environmental footprint that's going to get an age old job done deep into the 21st century. Now the team has been hard at work for for a while now, but today's groundbreaking is really a key milestone 
in what will happen over the next couple of years to the facility's completion as we, we go into operation in the summer of 2016. This $91 million project is the largest among $615 million of ongoing construction that Seattle District has here at JBLM. And thanks up front to the, to the leadership of JBLM, to the local community, and to the congressional delegation for getting this done. One often hears, you know, the term triple bottom line, and that comes from a book. I haven't read it, but it was uh, by a guy named John Elkington, wrote a 1997 book called Cannibals with Forks. And it, it talks about describing the importance of, of both social and environmental considerations rather than just kind of financial bottom lines. This project meets the Corps of Engineers' triple bottom line of our campaign plan goals and illustrates the strategic partnership between the Corps, Joint Base lewis McCord the community, the Puget Sound region here, and the industry. So I'll talk about kind of three of those, those key goals. First and foremost among the Corps of Engineers' goals are to support the warfighter. This facility is going to quietly go about its daily business. As Dennis said, you know, it's, it's, it's not sexy, but it's going to perform a fundamental function that's essential to the missions here of JBLM, Camp Murray, and American Lake. It's sized for a peak flow of 12 million gallons per day, supporting a 2030 population of 100,000, and uh, in fact has, you know, capability to be expanded as well. So it's going to get the job done. We're really proud to partner with Installation Management Command, with our industry team of Brown and Caldwell and Tetra Tech, who developed the contract documents up front, and now CDM Smith as the design-build contractor to deliver a sustainability platform essential to the nation's most service-integrated and enduring joint base. The second campaign plan goal of Transforming Civil Works is about delivering enduring essential water resource solutions. This is the rare military construction project that both serves the installation and benefits Puget Sound's larger community and the environment due to its exceptional features. Environmental leadership is a DOD imperative and the JBLM Seattle District Partnership has an extensive record of pioneering work in this arena. The core environmental operating principle of making sustainability a way of life is operationalized by JBLM and its net zero leadership. JBLM was doing, you know, net zero before it was kind of the thing to do. Puget Sound restoration is a regional and a national priority. The project makes long-awaited contribution to the Sound's health and water quality by eliminating, you know, major point source discharge here into Puget Sound. The third campaign plan is to prepare for tomorrow by delivering innovative strategic solutions using the newest science and technology. Well, here we're going to leap forward from this 1950s technology to the current state of the art that meets stringent water quality standards and it's consistent with the other adjacent communities' municipal facilities. Now, this is where things get a little techno geeky, but I am required to, to tell you a couple of things here. The plant will be uh, configured as a conventional activated sludge plant with tertiary membrane filtration removing nitrogen from the effluent. These f filters will treat water to a Class A standard and clean it to a level of allowing future uh, on-post, non-potable reuse. UV disinfectation will be incorporated in the process in lieu of chemical additives. Throughout the project development, every effort has been made to reduce environmental impact as well as plant utility and operation costs in the long term. And it's going to achieve a lead silver rating for occupied facilities. Finally, I want to mention how positive teamwork this far sets the conditions for a very successful project. When you build 50-year infrastructure, you've got to be very careful about how you go about doing it and how you assemble the team because you're going, to be, you're going to be left with that infrastructure for a long time. We started with an excellent request for proposal that was put together by Brown and Caldwell and Tetra Tech uh, and then worked very hard to have a solid strategy to be able to deliver this project within the programmed amount. We held an industry day back in November of 2012 to make sure that the architect, engineer, construction community was well aware that this, this opportunity was coming so we could assemble the best team and we, and we could also attract you know, small business to be part of that team. We then went through a two-step solicitation process that, that uh, was complete in January of 2014 with the announcement of CDM constructors selection that was based on their past performance, uh, their experience in similar projects. Uh, the fact that they had qualified subcontractors and their commitment to small business. But beyond a winning proposal, what happened next really speaks volumes. Uh, because, the, the, you know, I found out about 1 o'clock that they were selected. And that evening, about 6 o'clock, one of their West Coast leaders personally called me and, and you know, wanted to emphasize, number one, their excitement about uh, having the project, and number two, their commitment to doing a good job for us. And I can tell you I've been in this job here three years, 
and I was in another district for two years, and that has never happened where somebody's called me up, leadership of the company, and said, hey, you know, we're excited to be doing this with you. Usually you get the calls when, you know, if, if a project's going south, and, and so I really appreciate that commitment. And that kind of gets us to, to, the, to the bottom line, and that's that I'm very confident that the, you know, the contract team, the installation team, the community team, the Corps of Engineers are going to get this job done. We look forward to completing this construction safely, within budget, and on schedule, so that our partners here at JBLM can begin operating it. So building strong and sustainable in the Pacific Northwest, SA ONS. Thank you, Colonel Estock. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Tim Wall, President and Chief Operating Officer for CDM Smith. Colonel Estock, Colonel Hodges, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today to speak on behalf of CDM Smith. And it's an honor to be here to break ground on this very significant project for the Army and Air Force. Uh, we appreciate being chosen by the Seattle District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to be your partner in this design-build project of an important facility for Joint Base Lewis-McChord uh, community. Our work at Joint Base Lewis-McChord actually started 60 years ago um, when our former chairman and CEO, Bob Marini, was an Army First Lieutenant and assigned to then Fort Lewis as a post-sanitary engineer and his job was to advise what now is the uh, Director of Public Works on Quality Issues, I guess back then called the Post Surgeon. Um, so it's great to be back with you here today uh, to further his efforts and your efforts by joining the Army Corps to provide a new advanced wastewater treatment facility to serve the base community and support the continued growth of this vital inst installation. Uh, and make no mistake, as you've heard from others speaking today, this is a state-of-the-art facility. It supports your goal of contributing to the collective efforts to improve water quality in Puget Sound and protect its sensitive habitat, removes nutrients and produces high-quality effluent to meet the stringent regulatory requirements, and will be designed with an eye towards the future to allow a future water reclamation project which will continue your efforts moving forward to a sustainable and net zero water usage uh, here at the base. And you will have our best and brightest. And, and Colonel Lestark, I, I appreciate your remarks because we truly believe that one of the essential ingredients in design build is a true partnership from the start. And we're here to commit our A-team that will deliver a quality plant safely, on time, and on budget. So. To your point, uh, former Congressman, we will deliver this project on budget and on time. As an experienced national leader in providing integrated design build uh, fa facilities to the Department of Defense over the last 25 years, we appreciate your mission and believe in the tremendous outcomes our partnership will produce. And we are here to do our very, very best for the men and women of the Army Air Force, National Guard, and Reserves at Joint Base lewis McCord, who deliver their very best for our nation's strength and safety every day. And I'm going to close with a comment or a quote uh, from uh, Colin Powell. If you're going to achieve excellence in big things, you develop the habit in little matters. Excellent, excellence is not an exception. It is a prevailing attitude. We stand with you unified by an attitude of excellence, ready to deliver this world-class project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wall. I'd now like to introduce Roel Vanderloot, Director of Military Affairs and Senior Policy Advisor, Office of Representative Denny Heck, representing Washington's 10th Congressional District. Good morning. Sorry that uh, Congressman Heck couldn't be here this morning, but he did ask me to uh, read this letter. Uh, Dear Colonel Hodges, today is a great day. It is a great day for the Department of Defense, for Joint Base lewis McCord, for Washington State, and in particular, the Puget Sound. As a co-founder of the Congressional Puget Sound Recovery Caucus, I could not be more proud to associate myself with this project, one that has one of the South Sound's largest entities saying, we respect our neighbors, 
our environment, and we will take a leading role to do what is right for the region. The new JBLM wastewater treatment plant represents a commitment to a more sustainable future, a future that conserves water, that treats wastewater to meet a Class A reclaimed standard, and that paves the way for a purple piping system to distribute reclaimed water. I regret that I cannot be here at the event today, but I commend Joint Base Lewis McCord and its command for undertaking this very important project, and I say thank you. On behalf of the constituents of the 10th Congressional District, the citizens of Washington State, and for all those who would enjoy the splendor that is the Puget Sound. Sincerely, Denny Heck. Thank you, Mr. Vanderloop. Uh, I would now like to invite our distinguished visitors to join Colonel Hodges so we can kick this project off with its official groundbreaking ceremony.